Space is Sims, and we are back with more Cupid Parasite, hanging out with Raul, as always, because we're in his realm, but we're also hanging out at his house, because he got stabbed, and then we bitch slapped that bitch with an arrow, and now he knows that we're Cupid, and he's fucking adorable. I loved him anyway, but I still love him more. Anyway, so, we're hanging out at his house, we spent the night, um, yeah, so, it's already two in the morning. Ugh. My throbbing arm wakes me up. I guess it's because I slept on my side. Ugh, this is the worst. It time for more painkillers. I place a hand on my clammy forehead, then let out a sigh. I can feel the throbbing pain from my wound all over. I, again, I, I, okay, so we had to save in the last part, like, right before, like, um, well, to make a save file for, like, I don't want to leave him alone. I'll leave when he falls asleep. I still feel like because he's so sick like this, if we left, he would die in his sleep or something. Or like fall down the stairs and get injured. And he's, now he's in a coma and they never know if he's going to wait. You know what I mean? Like something bad would have happened to him. Not like, oh, we broke his heart. No, I feel like something terrible would have happened to him if we didn't stay. And like, maybe we'll find out because like, but like this just does not give me good feelings about the other ending there. So anyway. No way I can stomach the medicine without eating something first. I guess I'll just go back to sleep so I can ignore it. When the pain is strong enough that it's hard to fall asleep again, and that's when I decide to turn over to my other side. <sighs> Spacey, she's actually sleeping next to me. That means she took my request seriously and decided to stay the night. I've never felt so at ease with someone in bed next to me. This is the first time I've ever craved that feeling, too. I mean, my life's always been full of he oh hellos and goodbyes. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know why when I saw hellos, I was thinking my, my brain was in mythology mode for Raul, thinking he was going to say something mythological. <laughs> uh, I was going to say Helios, and I'm like, that's that's the word hello, Spacey. What the fuck? <laughs> As I'm reading, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. Right. Uh, full of hellos and goodbyes. It's been close to impossible for me to have someone long-term due to my constant travels. I met loads of people and learned something new every time. I'm glad that I've been able to live that kind of life. It's a very satisfying life from my perspective. But I never once thought I'd be satisfied with laying next to someone like this. Hey, are you awake? I whisper those words to her. In return, all I get is her soft, deep breathing. I guess she's pretty worn out, too. I reach out to take her hand. Hard to believe she's really next to me. That alone dulls my pain, at least a little. Next thing I know, I feel a warm, fuzzy feeling all over. Strange pang of emotion ripples in my chest. Kind of tickles. I take her small hand and roll over closer to her and... <gasps> oh! He's gonna kiss us in our sleep! That's so... Such a good boy. I love him. Anyway. A prince kissing his princess. And that's the kind of kiss I sneak in her sleep. A kiss that's nothing more than a brief touch. And the lightest kiss I've ever given a woman in my life. And yet, that single chaste kiss has my heart racing. He's so sweet. Although, while we're sleeping, Raul, it's fine if we're dating. We're not dating. And we said, don't you try anything and you're trying something. But, like, it's okay. It's okay. We'll forgive you. I'll forgive you. I know she will, but I will. My heart beats so loud that I can hear it thudding in my chest. I can feel my blood coursing through my veins. I mean, like, if I was, like, seeing someone on a, like, forehead kiss or give you a little kiss while you're sleeping, that's fine. But, like, you're not really dating. And we were like, don't you try any shit, mister. And then he kisses you in your sleep. <laughs> like, don't try to make out with me in my sleep. This is, like, a cute, sweet, innocent, like, it would almost be like I'm kissing her on the forehead. But still a little weird if you're not dating. You know, there's a line where this is on uh, on either side of that line. I'm not sure, but I'm okay with it, but it could be seen as a little inappropriate. Right. It sounds like crashing waves fills my ears. All of these sensations fill me with emotions I've never felt before. Wait, I get it now. I know what this is. And the feelings inside me aren't meant to be taken lightly. And this feeling, and this emotion, a kind precious feeling. I now know the name of this feeling inside my racing heart. It's indigestion. <laughs> There's only one feeling I haven't felt until now. 
But I'm not sure that I'm 100% right. Uh, for now, I'll just assume what I'm feeling. Say, Spacey? I whisper her name and gently kiss her again. I wonder if she'll scold me if she finds out. Probably. But I won't. She might. Now that I can hold these... Not that I can hold these feelings back any longer. Cupid was worried I didn't understand love. Yet, now she's here as a human woman who's willing to scold me. Laying here like this, she doesn't look or feel like a god. I chuckled softly into the darkness of the room. She's sleeping soundly without a clue. She really is just like any other human woman. She puffs her cheeks when she's angry, and she stumbles through life too. Sure, she's Cupid, but to me, this teacher was just a normal human woman. She told me that she wanted to be human, yet she went through all that trouble and even used her godly powers for me. I'm just honestly so thankful that she's worried about me, god or not. I feel like someone's special to her. You are, sweetie, we love you! That's why I want to be by her side for as long as I can. With her here, I know I can rest easy. Good night, Spacey. So if we didn't stay, he might not have realized he loved us, maybe. I still just feel like he's gonna die. <laughs> But maybe he's just like, oh, yeah, she left. I guess, uh, and then he doesn't know what love is. I whisper those words as soft as I can, uh, soft as I can manage, and kiss her one more time. Feeling satisfied and at peace, I lay next to her and then quietly close my eyes. Ooh. The first step of love. Aww. Can't wait to see how amazing his acting is now. The next morning. <laughs> He's got his little Cupid figure we gave him hanging up in his car. That's so cute. It's also an LCI. <laughs> Does he know about Gil? I mean, like, he's kind of buddy-buddy with Gil, but I wonder if he knows. But, um, I mean, he did say, I'll hang him up in my car so you can see him when we hang out. And it's like, he did. Oh, cute. Raul and I leave the house and head to the chute. The key holder is gently moving about in unison with the car's motion. Is that the key holder that I got at the Mythological Society? The key holder? You mean the key chain? It's the weirdest thing to call it a key holder. You noticed? I have a tied here. I have a tighter ever since you gave it to me so that I can look at it every day. <laughs> I just noticed it. I was thinking to myself, I hope she brings it up at some point. I didn't mean now. And I still can't believe the real Cupid was a girl. I wonder why Cupid is depicted as a male. Because the people who invented the gods are sexist assholes. <laughs> I mean, there are female goddesses, like, but still. Mm, to be honest, I'm not sure why, too. Most depict Cupid as a young male, and the Cupid in lore is depicted as an old man with a beard. But I was a girl ever since I was born. Well, maybe the Cupid that was a little chubby baby cherub, and then was an old man, was one Cupid, and then he died, and it was like, gotta get a new one! Because, I mean, like, Alan and Clara seem to know who you are, and they're, like, incubi, right? So I'm just like, and they also have, like, purpley kind of hair, and you've got, like, pinky purple hair. So it's like, did they kidnap? And didn't, did Alan say something about someone kidnapped as a baby or something? Where was that? Why am I getting that? Where did that come from? Did I read that somewhere? Where is that? Maybe it was from something else, and I'm reading it in here. Or didn't he, he said something about finding her or something? I don't know. There was a weird comment that he made at some point, I swear. And it was like, man, you know, like, I don't know. Maybe we were like, it, they like needed a new Cupid. And like, that's why we're good at love. Because like, look at the Incubi, right? They're like, oh, love. Nee, nee, nee. And like, anytime Clarus was around, Gil was having sexy, dirty dreams. Just saying. They're good at the sexy love stuff, and, like, we're up there shooting arrows, like, mm, good at the love stuff. I'm just saying, theory. Eh, you know. Anyway. In the first place, I don't recall any of the episodes about me that are depicted in mythology. <laughs> I'm sure I didn't do anything that's written. Perhaps there's another Cupid or something. See? And then that! It's like there was another Cupid at some point, and, like, they needed you. You know? And then you're like, so Jupiter, are you... Oh, no, that was actually... A... There was a different Jupiter that was sticking his dick and everything. I'm new here. I've only been here for a couple thousand years. Like, huh. Sure, let that ever be true. I mean, if that was true, then Dad wouldn't shove everything onto me. 
He does, because that other Cupid's gone. But I don't recall ever reading anything about Cupid being a girl. I never came to the human realm before, so maybe that's why people started to make things up and made it a part of mythology. Hmm. Not that I remember much from before, too. Apparently, I've been alive for a really long time. I don't know how old I am, because the concept of time is warped in Celestia. The next time I return to Celestia, I'll ask my aunt about why Cupid is depicted as a young male. I gaze at the shaking Cupid key holder as I drift deep into thought. Maybe this is the route we find out, and because it makes sense. I mean, you know, him being obsessed with mythology, he won't let it go. We finally arrive at the location of the shoot where we get out to do some stretches. Mmm, man, all that sleep did its work. Raul is stretching himself and is filled with energy despite getting hurt yesterday. I'm glad he didn't die in his sleep. <laughs> so... Okay, the bad ending is probably going to be like, we don't stay, so he doesn't realize he's in love with us, and whatever. Um, but, you know what I mean? I still just feel like something bad's going to happen to him. Nobody's died in any other routes, you know what I mean? So, I just feel like that would be like, wow, we just got heavy, but... Are you sure it doesn't hurt? Absolutely. Most of the pain goes away after having a good night's rest. I didn't know that. I haven't gotten hurt like that before, so I'm not sure what it's like to recover. The concept of getting hurt doesn't exist in Celestia, and I've only gotten a paper cut before after taking a human form. Well, paper cuts suck, though. No, Creeper, too. Hmm. I feel like today's gonna be great. Oh. So what's this about not having a Creeper? Uh, well, about that. Um, what to say? Sure, the Stalker is gone, but I can't tell her that I shot the Stalker with my leaden arrow. I look at Raul for help, but all he's doing is giving out a broad smile. The creeper left me after hearing me talk about mythology and things. Guess she didn't like my geekiness. Well, good to hear. Yeah, so no worries. Though I don't think I can get back to what she, back what she stole from me. Uh, I completely forgot that she took a lot of his belongings. You're like, you know what? Maybe. Are you sure you're okay with that? She is one of her members, so I can get in touch with her. Yeah, no thanks. Don't want to trigger her and things. Dad, I don't really want my stuff anymore since they're all wrong. All wrong is in... The Cuban merch she stole from me had Cuban depicted as a young boy, right? Raul puts his finger in front of his lips with a childish look on his face. He's so cute. I guess what he means that... What he means is that now that he knows Cupid's true identity, he doesn't need the goods that had Cupid depicted erroneously. Which is why I'm going to make some new goods. And with the right depiction of Cupid, too. Please do not use my likeness. Please no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, looks like the shoot's about to begin. So I better get going. Check out my acting, will ya? Raul lets out a meaningful smile that makes his way to get his hair done. Check out my acting. And you're like, okay. And you're like, wow, you that is the almost amazing thing. He's like, I was thinking of you the whole time. What? Hmm. I think he'll do pretty good today. The manager's voice is all over the place. Really? Raul's acting usually goes great when he has that look. I wonder what happened. Uh, he got stabbed? <laughs> I, I, I feel like me as, me as her would really be like, she's like, I wonder what happened. Oh, uh, the stalker stabbed him. So, maybe? <laughs> he got stabbed? What? Yeah, the stalker came and she like cut him. He's got a really bad gash on his arm. Uh, he seems fine, though. But, yeah. So, maybe that was it. <laughs> She's like, oh. Oh, well. Typical Tuesday. Goes on about her business. The agent looks at me as if she was posing a question to me. But I sincerely don't know the answer. Uh, the answer that you know right now. You don't know. He fell in love with me. Or he realized I'm actually Cupid. The answer is he got stabbed? Question mark. All I know is that we were attacked by the stalker. And that he found out that I was Cupid. He's not mistaking love with his excitement of getting to a real god, is he? No. Nope. I can't wait for us to be impressed. Let's get this going. Action! The shoot begins with the sound of the clapboard. Clapperboard, sorry. The actor's acting as passers-by walk in unison to the camera on the rail. Amid them is Raoul. He's gently holding the acting heroine's hand and lets out a smile like a blooming flower. I love this. Oh, did you see his little blush? Uh, he has a bashful yet happy look on his face. The face of someone in love. 
Amazing. So Raoul finally gets it! He told me that he'll put on the best act ever and the best act he did. The expression on Raoul's face is that of a man in love. Nice, nice. Let's get this moving. Sorry. I had a burp. Come on. The scene continues without stopping like before. Raoul expresses the joy and sorrow of love with all of his body. Mia, I want us to be a family with a happy future ahead. We'll have a home with white walls, a red roof, and a large garden. Raoul continues his striking act, a role of a sad man who knows that he'll never see love. Just seeing his act is gripping my heart with sorrow. We're over here. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, Raoul, you did good. I didn't know acting could change the dynamics of the scene so starkly. I'm sure this movie will be a success. Everyone's probably thinking the same because no one's stopping the shoot. Raul, I knew you could do it. You were just beautiful today. He's always beautiful. His acting was also beautiful, though. <laughs> the movie director is hugging Raul like crazy after the shoot ended. Whoa, ouch! Come on, I'm hurt, so mind let me go. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Still, I have to say, I never expected your acting, acting to change like this overnight. You were amazing! This is the Raul I've been waiting for. Well done! Yes, well done, Raul! I'm surprised how well that went. <laughs> good to know. Raul lets out a smile of relief. He then looks at me and comes dashing my way. Okay, I guess my job here's done. So, how is my acting from Cupid's point of view? Um, it, it was great. Really? Raul lets out a bright smile and holds both of my hands in his. It feels great hearing you say it was great. After all, you've seen love for as long as forever. Well, sure. Still, I'm not sure why his acting changed like this so suddenly. I wonder if it really is because he found out that I'm Cupid. I am a god, so maybe he changed his acting from sheer surprise of seeing a god that was only in his imagination. I don't feel like he, I, like I helped any, so honestly his praise feels also weird. To add, my heart is throbbing right now after seeing him act. He really did look like he was ser sincerely in love with the actress. Um, I guess we're done for the day, so I'll be... All right, let's go out and have some drinks in commemoration of Raul's awesome acting. I'll secure a restaurant for us. Oh, and you're invited too. You did advise Raul for his acting, so I'll put you under the head count, okay? Huh, me? Who else would he be referring to? Huh, but... Don't worry about it. He's not a heavy drinker, so no worries. Just come with us. It's nothing formal, and really, it's just the staff huddling together, so you should come, too. Can I really join them? Feels awkward to get myself in the mix, but the director did invite me, so I guess it's fine. To be honest, I'm happy now, since it feels like I'm finally part of the crew. Well, if you don't mind, then... Yeah, I wanted to actually ask you about something after the shoot was done today, anyway. More on mythology? It... Is there a problem? Mm, well, I sneak a peek at Raul, then burst into laughter, seeing the despair on his face. <laughs> Come on, stop with that look on your face. Sure we can talk. You have more to ask, right? Really? You sure we can talk? <laughs> as long as it's controlled. To add, Raul doesn't really dig too deep into things. He doesn't really talk much about mythology, at least not during breakfast, and not while driving. It's because I told him that I'm here as a human. He probably kept that to heart. If so, I should reward him just a bit. We look at each other and we give it and each give a chuckle. My top secret information about being the real Cupid is something only Raoul knows in the human world. Which is why we can walk side by side, telling jokes that only we can understand. That's like inside jokes. Oh my god, you're like dating! Or like best friends. It's quite a perk being able to speak with someone about things that are usually kept secret, such as stories about Celestia and the gods. Stories that I never ever... Stories that I never told ever since I came to the human world. Perhaps I wanted to talk about them from before. Perhaps I wanted someone to know the truth that I'm actually Cupid. It feels so great not having to keep a secret. Lord Jupiter may get angry if he finds out I've been disclosing secret information, but I'm sure if it's Raoul, he'll be fine. 
After all, he's the only one who seriously believes that we gods exist. And so I'm here with the crew to have a few drinks. The only actor here is Raoul. The rest were the general motley crew of the director, producer, cameramen, and the general staff. Now then, drink up, everyone! Can't get a job done without a few drinks, am I right? So, about what I wanted to ask. Raoul quickly takes out a bunch of papers of one sitting next to me. Here are some of my sketches. Will you mind making anything you s marking anything you see wrong here? Are these sketches? Yep, yeah, the faces of the Twelve Olympians. Well, most of them are sketches based on how I imagine them to look like. The Twelve Olympians, gods of DC, the great gods in Celestia, oh, the greatest. Is it any wonder why I haven't really spoken with any of them? Well, besides Dad, Mom, my Aunt, and Lord Jupiter, that is. The rest I only saw from afar, and most of the time from behind a pillar as I don't dare get in their way. So I don't really remember much about most of them here, but... First, this is what I imagined Jupiter to look like. Check it out! Now, he actually looks more like Peter... Wait. Raoul hands me his papers, and I flip to the next page. Right there in the page is a sketch of Jupiter, which almost made me laugh. He's way too sexy in the sketches. Um... I'm sorry. Have you opened your eyes? Jupiter was kind of sexy to begin with. He's a little, like, more normy, as like, awkward and slightly... Uh, Peter, he's still good looking, but, like, I'm sorry. I don't know. It's been a while since we've seen Jupiter, but I'm like, uh, he wasn't not hot, so... <laughs> Lord Jupiter isn't this sexy. He's more stern, and he has a mask on all the time. Huh? Really? And that's why she doesn't recognize Peter. I'm sorry, it was also just that, like, Jupiter kind of had the mask over one eye and Peter's hair goes on, and it's just, like, way too similar. Yes, he is the most prominent god. In fact, someone in low standing such as myself rarely ever gets a chance to even speak with him. Huh. And I'm surprised you folks have ranks. It's like that in mythology, too, right? There are gods known as the DC, and they have many shrines dedicated to them. I guess you're right. I see. I thought the ranks were just a matter of what humans made, but I guess it was true. Huh, so Jupiter is number one then. But he's not sexy at all. After all those girls he associated with. That doesn't really sound right, too. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, so he's got his ma See, I'm sorry. You don't think that's kind of sexy? Even with his weird mask thing on? He's still kind of sexy. The mask is a little... You're like, I don't know. That just adds to it. <laughs> okay, he does have the full map. But you know what I mean? Like, Peter's hair is kind of covering his... Eye. I'm just saying. It's just... Plus the white and the color... Co fight me. There's no way it's not him. Come on. Well, I know Peter is the secret character. But, like, it's kind of like... Why would there be a secret character? And why is it Peter if Peter isn't Jupiter? And then it was just... Kind of like... I mean, I know that didn't occur to me at first. It was like, Peter's a secret character. I don't understand why. But then when you see him and you're like, Wait, you got lightning bolts on you. Come on! And the color... Wait. 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 She also has the same color thing. So... Either Chi is Jupiter or Chi is spying specific and Jupiter's like, I sent him down to watch you because I was worried. You know what I mean? And it's like his personal pet. And that's why sometimes we don't see Chi because Chi's back home like, Dad, do I really have to? And he's like, go back. All right. One or the other. Anyway, the Lord Jupiter I know is very strict and would never lay a finger on a woman without thought. Can I ask something else? What is it? Were you this cute ever since you were in your world? Excuse me? I was just curious whether your face and style was the same as it was back when you were in your world. Hmm. Clothing aside, I don't think anything really changed. I see. Raul lets it a smile and gives me a good stare. Well, I'll make a statue based on your appearance then. What kind of clothing do you want depicted? Statue? What are you saying? I can't make a statue of you. I wanted to make it known that Cupid's actually this cute. Please don't. A a absolutely not. But it doesn't sit well with you that Cupid's depicted as a young boy, right? Well, yes, but... But... But I don't want Raul to see me as a god. Huh? I'm confused at the thought that just crossed my mind. And then she's like, why are you confused? Wait, wait. I'm Cupid. An existence to bring couples together in love. 
So what did I mean by thinking I don't want him to see me as a god? I wish he kind of said that out loud to him. Like, I don't want you to see me as a god. And he's like, what? And you're like, I. that's weird. Thanks for the wait. Oysters are here. Ew. Raul freezes in place with fear, seeing the plate filled with oysters on the table. Come to think of it, he did say back during Parasite House that he can't eat oysters, even to this day. <laughs> so you really don't like oysters? Don't like is an understatement. This is Satan in a shell. A true demon. And they have a creamy taste to them. A true ambrosia. But they have a demon hiding inside. <laughs> He's so crazy. I love him. He's going way overboard. Well, he got sick from them once, so I kind of understand, you know? Like, you eat something that makes you sick, and then you're like, I can never eat that again. And it takes, sometimes it takes years, and then you're like, maybe I'll try it. But, like, Raul's just, like, never gonna let it go. It's like something maybe you ate as a child that you hated. You're like, no, I hated that when I was six. I will never try it, even though you're like, as an adult, your taste has changed. What is the lemon jello going on in there? The lime jello? Like, there's some, like, cocktail sauce and shit, and, like, maybe some, like, is that like, like tartar sauce, probably, maybe different types of cocktail sauce, but what the fuck is that green shit? Why is there fucking lime jello? Why? What is that? It's like such a jello-y, liquidy, con it's weird. No, stop. Stop it. It's like fucking lime Kool-Aid. There's some limeade going on here. Like, I don't know what that is. I've only had oysters with freaking, uh, like, cocktail sauce or whatever. Anyway. Raul is shaking with a pale face. He's okay with alligators and piranhas, but he can't handle oysters. Well, yes, there are people who get food poisoning from eating raw oysters, but that's still few and far between. I was fine when I had them at the last wedding I attended, and at the oyster bar that Gil took me to. It's such a waste he's so scared of these tasty morsels over one incident of getting sick. Raul even said it's like ambrosia, which shows he's praising them. Well, I'll have one then. I'm a god, so if I'm fine, you should be fine too. Huh? You're challenging Satan? You should stop right now. I doubt you can even... Oh, you worry too much. Now then, which one should I try? He could have a... Do you eat, like, other shellfish? Because maybe you have a shellfish allergy. I look at the oysters on the plate and eye them one by one. I decide to try out... Wait, this is a choice? Okay, hold on. Oh! Oh my god, really? The wrong choice is a bit- Do we die if we- <laughs> Okay! Okay! The plump oyster on the far right. The small oyster under the slice of lemon. If So if we choose the small oyster under the slice of lemon, we get a bad ending. Do we die? Or then does he, like, fine, he'll take the plump oyster and... I can't believe this is a choice! And this leads to a bad end! I shouldn't be surprised, though. It is Raul Sprout, so... Alright. Weird. I ponder for a bit, and I finally decide to try the plump oyster on the far right and pop it into my mouth. Hmm, so good. The creamy texture slowly melts away in my mouth. My cheeks puff from its divine taste. We're at a diner, though. Okay, so here's the thing. Like, okay, yeah, oysters, fine. I don't know if I'd really trust oysters from a diner. You know, like, the food at diners are great. But, like, oysters at a diner? Like, a seafood restaurant or something? And even then, you know, depending. But, like, but like, still, a, a diner? Let's go to a dive bar and eat some fucking oyster. Maybe, no. Maybe don't. I don't know. I just, I don't there's no saying that the diner is going to, like, have them stored and saved and prepared. I mean, they're raw, but, like, you have to cut them. You know what I mean? Like, is it going to be able to do that any better or worse than a fancy, like, seafood restaurant? But I still just feel like, I don't know. You know? I... Anyway. He really is missing out on something as good as this. Raul is holding his breath as he looks at me, eating. I give it a few more bites and swallow it down. I then turn towards him with a smile on my face. Mmm, so good. These oysters must be the good kind. Huh? Uh, are you sure about that? 
Or maybe if we took the small one, he would get the big one and then not be able to handle it because it's too much. Ah! And then he'd have a freak out and he'd choke or something and then like whatever. But maybe if he actually tries the small one, it's like, just try a little bit. You know what I mean? You do that with kids. Here's not a giant plate of gross vegetables. Just try a couple. Just try one fucking pea, okay? One tiny little piece of spinach. <laughs> I am a god, you know. Uh, I thought you said something about it being risky in the human realm because you took the form of a human. And you're like, oh, come on. You're... Uh, 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 and he's like, oh, and you're like, I'm just kidding. Uh, that would be rude. It would be so mean, but it'd be kind of funny. Come now, Raul. Try one. Uh, but... They're all good. I'm sure of it. I mean, I'm fine. See? Here's the thing. It's like... I feel like pushing him to try it is rude. It's not, it's like, are you, I'm like, are you sure you don't want to try one again? Like, you had one a long time ago and it made you sick, but, you know, you're probably going to be fine, you know. And doing that, he's like, no. And you're like, all right, it's cool. But don't, if someone's like, no, I'm not interested in trying it, or no, I don't like, just do it again. No, I don't want, do it again. Come on, come on, come on. We're being a little weird being pushy and try, having him try it. You know what I mean? Like... Just a little bit. It's more like, I mean, they're fine if you wanted to try one again. You don't have to. But, like, I feel like she's just being a little insensitive to his plight of him being traumatized from eating one before. <laughs> like, you know? Or is it that you don't believe the words of Cupid? So, and then this! No, that's right. You're gaslighting him, girl. Stop it. I tease him with my words and smile and then use a fork to scoop an oyster up to Raul's face. This is so mean. Come now. Open wide. Huh? Um, Raul confusingly looks back and forth between the oyster I have up in front of him and my face. This is mean. Er, um, well, if Cupid's okay, then I guess Satan didn't do his work then. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to, again, it's one thing to convince him that like, oysters are not Satan, Raul. <laughs> You'll be fine if you wanted to try one. But if he's not interested... Teasing him and forcing it on him is fucking rude. You know what I mean? It's fucking rude. Well, it does sort of look good, I guess. Uh, I know oysters taste great, but... I'll be fine. If a god is fine, then I'll be fine too. Here I go. Raul bites on the oyster hole. He gives it a few bites and his eyes glimmer. Uh, so good. I mean, it's good that we helped him get over his fear of oysters, but we did it in a really weird way, is all I'm saying. Yeah, this is the thing. Ambrosia for real. Mm, I haven't had oysters for a while, but it tastes so good. <laughs> right? How about another one? Not that I'll force you. Really? Because you're kind of forced to the first one. Just saying. Um, I'd like to have another, please. Coming right up. And now we're feeding him. We're feeding him oysters. Come on. I pick him I pick another oyster and scoop it up to his face again. This time Raul pauses only for a moment before biting onto the oyster. Mmm, so good. I haven't had one since the Neptune Festival. Oysters are the best. Yeah, I bet they taste even better because you're feeding them to me. Right. That's kind of sexy. He closes his eyes to savor the oyster, then lets out a huge phew of satisfaction. Seeing him overreacting was too much for me to handle as I burst out laughing. <laughs> so you actually liked eating oysters before you had that food, po food poisoning incident? Yeah, to be honest, they were my favorite. So I ate a bucket full back then and things went south from there. You probably ate too many! I see. I'm not surprised he got sick if he did literally eat a bucket full. Well, you are a god, so seeing you eat one made it easier for me to try them out again. Thanks a million. Seeing his innocent smile made my heart race. I wonder if maybe, or the small one with under the lemon, if we take it off and then we're like, Ugh! and we freak out because maybe we don't like the taste of lemon or something. And then like, then he's afraid to try it. He's eating it out of trust and knowing that is filling, with me, filling me with joy. But at the same time, what he said made me sad. His words implied that he trusts me because I'm a god. That isn't a reason I want to hear feels like it takes precedence over my personality and my efforts. But at the same time, I guess I should be happy for being in an existence that brings him ease. I smile and give him another oyster. You're very welcome. 
Now then, enjoy more of these oysters. Approved by a god. Sweet. Raul happily pops another in his mouth. Seeing him happily downing the oysters is again filling me with joy and sadness. Even so, it sure is good to see Raul eating them with a smile on his face. I shouldn't dwell on the details. What's important is what's happening now. I scoop another piece from the plate and place it near Raul's face again. Yeah, you're feeding him. Raul bites onto it like it's some kind of domesticated animal. Like, some kind of domesticated animal. His actions are so funny that Raul and I burst in, uh, finally burst out laughing together. Like, this is such a cute, precious, like, lovey, adorable, but also kind of sexy you're feeding a moisture's moment. Oh my, those two really are getting along well together. I suppose Raul's acting is better now because of her. Surprising enough, it doesn't seem like she knows that. His acting's great now, so I guess I can end the contract soon. I better give heads up the next time I talk to her. After all, if this keeps up, things might go south with Raul's acting career. Yeah, she's like, okay, great, they're in love, and now I gotta get rid of her. The next day... We arrived at the shoot, only to learn that the director was hospitalized. The director got food poisoning from the oysters? Ugh, which means Satan was there all along, and I was only safe because of you. The, the director ate the small one that we didn't eat. Um, I don't think that's true. So what's the plan for today? I'm very sorry, but we'll skip today's shoot. I was hoping to let everyone know sooner, but I only got in contact with him just now. Let's see. Well, not much to do about it. How about we go out together and... Oh, wait. It's from him. Hello? Huh? It was your appendix? Huh? Appendix? Yes. Yes. Uh, sh sure. Please let him know to rest well. So about today... I'm sorry, um, it seems like he needs to stay put for another two weeks for the appendectomy and aftercare at the hospital. He said that he wants to hold off on the shoot while he's away. Yeah, I see. I didn't know Satan atta could attack someone's appendix. Scary stuff. It wasn't the oysters, Raul! Uh, I don't think oysters in his appendix links at all. Well, I suppose they found out he has problems with his appendix because of their missed call on the food poisoning. Um, so if the shoot's canceled for another two weeks... <laughs> Which means we can go and... Actually, this works out for us. I had plans for Raul to do another shoot. You know, for Cupid Core's ad. Oh, I forgot about that. Thank you very much for reminding me. Well, we can discuss about it today. Raul, you don't need to be in the discussion, so you go home and rest for today, okay? Uh-huh, but I... Go home and rest for today. Your wound isn't completely healed, right? You deserve to rest from the crunch. That sounds like a plan. Raul, please rest for today. Now, shall we? I'll contact, contact Duff while we find a place to discuss. I'll see you again, Raul. Bye! Oh, uh, sure, okay. Aw. A day off just when I finally got the acting on a roll. Sure, hope our big shot director is okay. Aw, he just wanted to spend time with us. We're like, okay, puppy, you stay here. And he's like, but I wanted to come with you. I want to go on walkies. Anyway, we found ourselves in a meeting room at Cupid Core HQ. Raul's agent and I have finished discussion discussions with Duff handling the ads and are now taking a short breather. We're each drinking a cup of freshly brewed coffee. Well, now, I think that went well. Thanks again, my wonderful advisor. Same here. I'm sure we'll get more female members with Raul acting as our poster boy. Which would mean I can bring more people together. A perfect situation for me is Cupid. <laughs> it works out for both of us. And it seems like Raul's acting is finally shifting gears. I think that should do. Huh? The agent smiles and gently places the coffee cup onto the table. Suddenly her smile is replaced with a serious expression. Because of you, Raul's acting has improved for the best. I really appreciate what you've done for him. Oh, um, I didn't do anything. No, I don't think he would have changed if it wasn't for you, so I'll be sure to put in a good word to your president. You fulfilled your side of the contract. Thank you very much for keeping watch and assisting us with his acting and lessons. Uh, 
That's right. The contract was made under the notion that I would help until Raul's acting was fit for his role. His acting is amazing. There really isn't much help, much I can help with now. I should be happy I accomplished my goal, but I'm sad that it's ending, too. Thank you very much for using our services. If there's anything, please do come to us again. Sure thing, you can count on it. Well, if you'll excuse me. They both bow at each other and leave the meeting room. Oh, Raul's not going to let this go. He's going to show up here. She's going to be like, you need to not talk to her again. I see Raul's agent off at the elevator before returning to my desk. My work as an advisor to Raul's acting is done, so this is where I'm going to work again from tomorrow. I don't need to go to the shoots anymore, even when the director returns. I said that I'll see Raul again, but I guess it's a lie now. But this is what my job is about. It's something I already knew from the very beginning. But you don't think that, like, okay, yeah, I don't need to see him anymore, but, like, he's been friend, so you should contact him and be like, hey, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to, like, let's meet up for coffee. Yeah, so I'm not going to be working as your agent anymore, but I want to say good luck and, like, blah, blah, especially because you've kind of become friends-ish. It's not 100% professional, you know what I mean? Yet somewhere inside me, I'm sad, which I shouldn't be, cons which I shouldn't be, considering I can return to my job on ma of matchmaking people again. The agent mentioned she put in a good word for me, so I'm sure I'll get a promotion. But my chest aches. I sit at my desk feeling a bit unsatisfied. Bless you, you just sneezed on me. What are you doing? He's cleaning yourself, but you got a spot on your tail you need to clean. You just got some of the stuff from your pin feather that was coming out. You gotta get that off. Just a little skin sheath on your pin feather is gross. A uh, sudden day off. With well, nothing better to do, I decided to head down to the museum. If only Spacey was here. <laughs> I look around, writing down my theories onto a memo. Too bad there's no one I can talk with right now. It's so fun being able to share and exchange thoughts. Hmm. This isn't it. I wander around a bit and gaze at the map that shows the route and achievements by Alexander the Great on his expedition to the east. For some reason, I'm strangely attached to Alexander the Great. Maybe it's because I've traveled the world, too. I wonder what it feels like to conquer all the places you go to. When Alexander the Great died at the age of 32 from malaria. Sure, I like traveling, but not malaria. Suddenly, I get a call from my agent. Whoops, I can't answer it in here. And I quickly go outside the museum. Raul speaking. Ah, oh, Raul, we got the shoot confirmed. You're open tomorrow, right? Absolutely. So are you done with your discussions? Yes, just now. Which means she's available. Just the thought brings joy to me. I better call her now. We can go out together and... I terminated the contract with our advisors and your acting is better now. Huh? Terminated what? Why? Because my acting is better? She won't be around for the shoot tomorrow, so keep that in mind, okay? Why'd you do that? Why didn't you let me know beforehand? I guess I'm yelling now. I only realize that from how loud I am. What am I doing? I shouldn't be yelling at my agent. She's kept my schedule and looked after me, always making the right choice for me at the right time. Even so, this is crossing the line. I can't believe she just ended things without letting me know. I know she broke up with your girlfriend without telling me. I mean, that's what it feels like you're saying, right? I'm sorry about that. I'll talk with you again later. I cut the line and then sit on a nearby bench. No, I can't imagine being at the shoot without her. I put my head down in anger. Then again, I also know I'm just being childish about this. I mean, she was only a temporary advisor who was hired to help by my agent. Since my agent put the contract together, then it's in her right to terminate the contract. My job is to act, and that's it. Any sillywood actor knows that it's best to just listen and stay with the program. But she's not just an advisor to me now. I want her to be by my side. But our relationship was simply something that would fall apart with the termination of the contract. I'm such an idiot. I'm supposed to be used to all this getting together and breaking apart thing. But it's different, because before it was like, oh, I was kind of friendly with that person, and, you know, I enjoyed having, like, a business relationship, but this is different. I became friends with a young boy I met at the... Petra ruins and the old granny working at the local bazaar under the notion that we'd part ways one day. We'd have a meal together, laugh together, and exchange buttons on her clothes in commemoration. I did plenty of things to keep good old times to mind. 
Meeting and parting ways with others adds layers to your life. And that's what my mom and dad said, too. I mean, again, that's, yeah, knowing I'm making friends with these people I may never see again, but it's different than falling in love with someone. But not this time. I want her to stay by my side, even if there's no reason for her to be with me. And this is the first time I actually want someone to be with me, so I'm really not sure what to do. I never thought parting ways with someone would be so painful. Oh, Such a sweet boy. Well, now that came out of nowhere. I never heard him yell like that before. He would always listen to what I said, but it's good he's actually biting back now. It'll add depth to his acting. Raul, do your best. This is your turning point in your career as an actor. If you want someone, you can't just let me cater to you. You can learn a thing or two by taking ac taking action on your own initiative. It's funny because at first you were like, oh, I'll terminate so then he's not near her. And she's like, if you want her, you need to go get her, Raul. What? It's okay. You're fine. It's just... It Adventures in love. It was just the birdie feathers on the TV. You're fine. What the fuck? That like freaked him the fuck out. We'll go ahead with this plan then. Welcome on board. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'll be looking forward to results. Yes, leave it to me. It's been a few days after my contract with Raoul's... Raoul Folks ended. With Raoul Folks ended. Well, anyway. With Raoul ended. I'm back to my usual work of handling new members. I was worried whether I could get back to my groove, but I've been able to sign up five customers already today. Isn't what did, did she say it was a few days later? Oh no, it doesn't say that anywhere here. I thought the manager. A few days. So Raul's like, man, I don't want my contract to end with her a few days later and he doesn't contact her at all. I suppose he's doing the should I? I don't. And he's like pacing back restlessly trying to figure it out. Okay. I need to support them and make sure they find happiness in marriage. As for my promotion. I haven't heard from him at all. I thought the president would contact me, but for some reason I haven't heard a single word from him still. I don't think he forgot about me, but... Chi? It's been a while since I've seen Chi after being scared away by Raul. Chi flutters gently onto my lap. Well, I can see him later today. That aside, I better get back to business, bringing people together again. What's important is for me to bring people together. I matched a couple today, and I'm sure they'll end up marrying one day. As for the other person who didn't seem very confident, I'm sure this member would be a perfect match. These two have been dating for quite a while, so I should check on him to see whether he wants to marry her or not. Did you want to marry her or not? Like, you need that kind of pressure. You've got this girl who's like, I mean, like, someday when we get married and have kids, right? Huh? Huh? You've got your parents, you got all that, and then you have your bridal advisor calling, like, so I matched you. Are you married yet? Like, good God, this man. Doesn't need that kind of stress. <laughs> the human Cupid is working hard as usual here. Huh? An email? Who could it? You may give her a promotion. All that's left is, is, is to dispense with the formalities. Shelby Snail. Finally! Gee! I stand up from my seat and pump my fist into the air. Promotion! I finally did it! Now Dad can't complain to me anymore. I made it this far as a human. I'm sure I can convince Dad now. Uh, it's been so long. After going to college and majoring in psychology with a focus on romance and love, I finally got into Cupid Corps. Then in a year, I was recognized as the top bridal advisor within the company, then assigned to Parasite 5, and now a promotion. The bridal manager? Or maybe the chief advisor? I can't wait to learn what my new position will be. Chief janitor. What? We're downsizing. I'm just kidding. I'm sure I'll become a matchmaking specialist that's worthy of my professional background on love. Oh, I just feel like we're going to be in for disappointment if we're thinking like this. I'm going to be the human world's top advisor, a literal god of bonding. Of course, I am a god, so... But with its new status, I'm going to slap my dad in the face with words of happiness from the couples I've brought together. I'm sure dad's finally going to agree after he sees what I've done and become. Everyone I've brought together are doing well. Things are going even better than back when I was working as Cupid. Heh, <laughs> you can already see my dad's face now, frowning at my results and jealousy. I should let my aunt know that I'll return to Celestia as soon as I get that promotion and... Huh? When I return to Celestia... I'm done? Huh. I stand in silence as if I lost sight of the mountain I was supposed to climb. 
I was running with all my might and all this time to make it to the top, but I never once thought what I'd do once I reached the top. I started this challenge to prove that humans don't need the gods, but once proven, there's no reason for me to be here. I've brought more people together as a human than I did as a god. What else is there for me to do? Fall in love with Raoul? I guess I'm back to shooting arrows once I return to Celestia. After proving that humans are capable and don't need the gods, I'll go back to being Cupid again. Doesn't make sense. But I don't think the gods will allow me to stay in the human world to continue my job as a normal human. But I won't be able to see everyone again once I return to Celestia. My precious friends, Claris and Gil? And of course, Raoul. I don't want to part ways with Raoul and return to my position as the god of love. My memories being with him sits in my mind heavily. The Raoul who listened to everything I said, I love seeing his happy, innocent smile. The thought that I'd never be able to see his eyes again is making my heart wrench. My life in the human world with him was filled with happiness and joy. Which is why I don't really want to go back to Celestia, even if that is my homeland. I see. When did I start to feel this way? When did this place start to feel like home when you fell in love with Raoul? Even though I've only been here for six years, I feel a stronger emotional connection to Lost York than I do to Celestia. I'd be happy if I could just live here forever. And I'd be even happier if Raoul were here with me. But he's not under my care anymore. He's a full-fledged Sillywood actor now, which means I won't be able to meet him so casually like before. Guess I should just go back home to Celestia if I can't see him again. I can't get myself to make a decision. Yeah, he is definitely not going to invent Bumble Pig and fly to meet you, so you should figure that out before you leave. First, I better let my aunt know about my promotion. She helped me get to the human world. She supported my ambitions. So she should be the first person to know about my promotion. She's like, you must be so happy! And she's like, yeah. No. I'll then go and see her and discuss if there's a way I can convince the gods to let me live in the human world. Of course, if my aunt is against that idea, then I'm out of options at that point. I did use my leaden arrow, too. I better ask her about that. I use my divine artifact, so if Jupiter decides to look for me, he'll probably find out where I am in an instant. She? She's over there like, bitch, he knows. I've been following you this whole time. Uh, she... Oh, um, it's nothing. You're so lucky you don't need to think like me. Chi! Chi comes and rubs against my cheek. Come to think about it, I got Chi to worry about, too. I mean, there's the... Him acting like an animal doesn't seem like a Jupiter thing to do, so I'm really... It's, he's probably just, like, Jupiter's pet and a spy for him, but I just still think it'd be fucking hilarious. Celestia in the human world. Both are places that I can't sever ties with. I never thought that I'd have a... I have more than one place that's important to me. In any case, I better first discuss what to do with my aunt. What I at least know now is that I don't want to go back to Celestia. Ooh. Yeah, I'm done with my photo shoot for Cubicore's ad. With nothing better to do, I decide to wander around the city. Hmm. I thought maybe I'd see her through the, through the gig with Cubicore. Unfortunately for me, the shoot wasn't held at Cubicore's headquarters. So she wasn't there, and all I could do was listen to what everyone wanted me to do with my agent and the marketing folks. And the photo shoot went fine and ended quick. As for the movie shoot, the director had to take had things to take care of, so I have the rest of the day open all to myself. They said he was going to be out for a few weeks, and it's only been a few days. Just saying. And also, the day the, the director got food poisoning and he went to the museum, our... A his agent called and said the photo shoot was tomorrow. So, like, is it a few days? Is it now a few weeks? Because the director... But, like, come on. Time is fucked up and I don't like it. Don't be like, remember the other day? You mean earlier this morning? Or, do you remember the other day? Three years ago? Like, it drives me crazy. <laughs> I don't know why. I just need to have a, like... I do not have a very good defined sense of time. I'm always like, what the fuck day is it? Holy shit, it's February? What? For you, it's probably March by now, but like, wait, is it? I don't know. I really don't know anymore, but like, you know, but I'm always like, what the fuck? So I need games to have a very defined sense of time because otherwise it drives me crazy. <laughs> games need to do different than me anyway. Anyway, what to do? Maybe I can go to the library and check on. 
Suddenly I got an email from someone. I had taken my phone to confirm it was from one of my friends with the Mythological Society. Hmm. What the? Wh what? I yell the moment I read the email. Inside were words stating that I that untouched ruins were discovered in Greece. The head of the society is inviting every member and is even letting them bring their friends. I'm hyped as heck now and I keep reading the email. Untouched ruins in Greece? They project that it was built around the 20th, around 20th century BC. Dormants found in pyramids and ziggurats were found. Uh, speculating the ruins were used for politics. It seems like they need a lot of help. So that's why they're letting members bring their friends to the excavation. Yeah, I keep reading the wall of text going into detail of what they know right now about the ruins. Oh my god, he's going to leave and then we're going to be sad. And they're also speculating that it may have been built as a way to the way to the world of the gods. The stairs leading to the heavens. The text ends with a statement that they want as much help as possible as they want to investigate the ruins as soon as they can. Perfect timing. The movie shoots on a hiatus right now, so I'm going to go and join the crew. Let me see. Maybe I can invite her to come with me. I mean, if the ruins are supposed to have been built as a way to the world of the gods, I'm sure she's going to find it interesting. And it does say we can bring a friend with us. I'm just trying to find an excuse. The reason why I want to invite her is because I want to see her. What if she refuses? I remember back when she refused my invitation for her to come to my home. Well, there's always a chance she'll say yes and come with me. I shouldn't give up before I even try. That's exactly, he's like, what if she says no? You won't know unless you ask. And to be specific, I'm more scared of not meeting her than being told she doesn't want to be with me. Guess I'll invite her. She taught me how to love. She reminded me how I used to like oysters. The world is brilliant when she's around, and she makes everything fun and exciting. <laughs> I love him so much. Which is why I want to meet her. And when I do, I'll finally let her know my true feelings. I'll let her know how my acting has improved. How I feel lonely when she's not by my side. All that and more is because of one reason. Because you're in love with us. Oh, and this is the perfect place to end it. We're a little under time, but that's okay. We were way over time last time. So anyway, I will see you guys. Maybe we'll get our confession of love in the next part. So excited. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up. And subscribe to see more.